welcome back everyone to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. Did you miss me? I missed me. I miss putting out content the last couple of days. I know I, I popped in that one video. It wasn't done to the best quality of what my liking, but I had to talk about it. You know, with all that's going on in professional sports, not just WNBA, but there's a whole lot of things that are happening within professional sports and college sports for that matter. There are things that popped off this week that I did not get to jump in on yet, and I will be jumping on them today, tonight, actually. First of all, let's talk about this Angel Reese SI cover, Sports Illustrated cover of the 50 most influential figures in sports. But before we jump in, thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. Please do like, subscribe, follow, share, comment. But when you subscribe, ring the bell so you get all the up-to-the-minute updates. I want to see our numbers go up. Get them to 5,000. Please, let's get this done. I appreciate you. This is what we're talking about today on this episode of Rudy's rant. This, this list, <clears throat> that's what this is about. This list. Has Sports Illustrated lost its ever love in mind? 50 most influential figures in sports. Let me tell you who's not on this list. Because this list is not just men. It's men and women. Let's, let's see who's not on this list. Shohei Otani. Aaron Judge. I guess baseball just doesn't matter. Okay. They're not on that list. This is your cover. This is the cover of this list. Angel Reese. They did an entire deep dive into Angel Reese and how, look at this title. Why the WNBA's golden age is just beginning. And your cover story is Angel Reese. If you notice, that's the exact same outfit she wore her first game, not the first game she did not play after she hurt her wrist prior to wrist surgery. So she had time for a cover shoot in the exact same outfit she was rocking the night of that game that she did not play in. This is a joke. This is a joke. Let's talk about this for a second. Let's talk about it. Could you name... 10 WNBA basketball players prior to this season. Wait, I'll give you a few seconds. Go. Okay, if you haven't named 10 by now, it's because you didn't know 10. Because I can name 10 NBA players in 10 seconds without thinking about it, right? <clears throat> How this cover can be anyone not named Caitlin Clark is a disgrace. Understand this. This list that SI called the most influential figures in sports includes nine women affiliated in one way or another with the WNBA. This includes Angel Reese, who, look, she deserves to be on the list. Kathy Engelbert, the commissioner of the WNBA. Did you know who the fuck Kathy Engelbert was a year ago? Two years ago? Three years ago? You didn't know a damn thing about Kathy Engelbert in January of 2024. 2024. I'm going to mess up my ring. Let me take it off. If Kathy Engelbert walked right past you, you wouldn't have known who the hell she was. 
She is now one of the 50 most influential figures in sports. So the WNBA, uh, the WNBA commissioner is more influential than Major League Baseball's commissioner. Because I'm pretty sure I didn't see Rob Manfred on that list. Although I think my, Rob Manfred's an atrocious commissioner for Major League Baseball. I think he's probably slightly more, slightly more, slightly more influential than Kathy Engelbert. But let's take a look at these other people who are on this list. <clears throat> Which one will make you laugh the most? So Kathy Engelbert. Let's read what they said about Kathy Engelbert. I want you to see this type of direct and nonsense. Mm -mm -mm. Kathy Engelbert, in her five years in office, the WNBA commissioner has guided the league through arguably the most eventful period of his 28 seasons. Engelbert's tenure has included navigating the pandemic, a groundbreaking collective bargaining agreement. <laughs> Stop it. A major capital rise and the skyrocketing growth of the last few months. Yes, that's because of Kathy Engelbert. Yes, she's led that skyrocketing. I mean, come on. Come on. Like, oh, my word. <clears throat> I can't even, I don't even want to look at more of this crap. This is stupid. Let's go to the next one. I'm going to save this joke for last. Look, I got, I, I, I like, I, I, I do. I, I, I like Flaugé Johnson. I, I do. Can we not? This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. Flaugé Johnson is one of the 50 most influential people in sports. Flaugé Johnson is more influential than Shohei Otani and Aaron Judge. Oh, my God. Jerry Jones. Steph Curry. Steph Curry wasn't on the list. This list is embarrassing. This list is embarrassing, man. Blaje Johnson is more influential than Steph Curry. Her rapping landed her on America's Got Talent. Her hooping got her a national title at LSU in 23. Now entering her junior season, the 20-year-old has a major record record deal, a slew of commercials, and a deserving reputation as electric guard. She's a good player. Flaje Johnson's a good player. I like Flaje Johnson. This is embarrassing. She's a good player. That's what she is. She's good. She's not even a she won't even be a first team all American next year. Like, come on, people, man. Oh, here we go. Of course, you love this one. Asia Wilson. Asia Wilson's gracing us. Underestimating this six-time All-Star is proving to be a dangerous game. Blah, 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 blah. What the fuck ever. No one knew who Asia Wilson was two years ago. Look, yes, I know there's going to be those rabid WNBA fans, the, the, the 12 of you in the corner. Who have been watching the WNBA since 1997? You'll tell me, and all that other bullshit. Even though the WNBA ratings have been on a sharp decline from the end, from 2010, 11 around there, and just gone like this until the one, the only Caitlin Clark showed up to save the league from its own demise. Asia Wilson, no one cared about, no one knew about. Didn't matter who she was. Good player. She's not a great player. She's a good player. She can't handle the ball. She's 6'5. Like, let's let's she's a center in the WNBA. She's 6'5. She wouldn't she'd be a guard in the NBA and she can't dribble. She can't shoot from more than 16, 17 feet as a guard in the in the NBA. Her range is mid-range, 16, 15, 16, 17 feet. But she plays good defense, great defense. I don't think so. Like, her coach just went crazy about her not being 
a uh, shoe in for defensive player of the year. She's not. She plays a zone. She's zone. She plays the zone defense primarily when she's playing against play players that can't shoot from the perimeter. They put her on the worst shooter so she can go could basically play a zone, waiting to be help be a help side defender and block some shots. Sorry, but block shots don't make you a great defensive player. It means you block shots. It means you're taller than everybody's everybody, everyone else. It means that you're helping when they're in there when they're being guarded. Good. You're a good defensive player. Great. I don't think so. But she's a top 50 influential player. Nobody wants her fucking play. You can't make this shit up, folks. Nobody watched her play. She's so influential that the that the highest rated WNBA game last year was 800,000. That was game four of the finals. She couldn't draw flies to shit. She couldn't get a fat kid to eat cake. With all respect, Asia Wilson, she's good. Nobody watched her play. No one gave a shit about watching her play. Can we stop lying to ourselves? Who made this fucking list? Can they stop making lists to pander to people? This pander job is disgusting. It's absolutely fucking disgusting. Let's move on to the next. <clears throat> With respect, give me a break. You're going to sit here and tell me a college sophomore is one of the 50 most influential people. <laughs> Come on. I mean, no one would even know who the fuck Juju Watkins was last year if not for the nonstop attention that Caitlin Clark drew to college women's basketball. These lies that are, look, I like Juju Watkins. I think she's going to be great. People try to compare her last year to Caitlin Clark, which was embarrassing. She shot 40% from the field. Come on. She's a good player. She's going to be a great player. Is she polarizing enough to make people watch? We don't know yet. We don't know. ESPN's trying real hard. They're going out of their way, promoting this USC UConn game between her and Paige Beckers. They're doing what they, they want. They're trying hard. They're going to find out real fast that no one gives a fuck. They're going to find out real fast that Iowa is a special place. A state that has no professional sports teams. A state that realistically has nothing but Iowa. Hawkeyes, basketball, football, Iowa State, Cyclones, but really it's Iowa the University of Iowa sports. And you had a transcendent athlete at Iowa for four years. And she was a homegrown star who made Iowa women's basketball matter. Back-to-back -back national championship appearances. Look at who her teammates were. She carried a bunch of nobodies. Yes, someone's going to say Kate Martin. Kate Martin is a, is a role player and is barely playing for the Aces right now. Quite frankly, it's a shocker that she was drafted. Dabby Marshall's not in the league. You Could you even name me the third starter from that team? I'll falter. Where is she? I don't even. I don't even know where she is. I know Stalky will probably be in the league next year or the year after. Um, come on, man. Juju Watkins is a good player. Don't sit here and tell me that this young. Yeah, I don't care that she's the former SI Sports Kid of the Year. There's been plenty of SI Sports Kids of the Year before Juju Watkins, and no one sat here saying they were one of the 50 most influential people in sports as a sophomore 
in college, no less, in a sport that we don't know if people are going to keep watching now that Caitlin Clark has left. In a city where she couldn't draw a sellout in a small building that has 12 million people in the metropolitan area. Los Angeles. <laughs> she can sign with Nike all day. I don't care. It doesn't mean that she's transcendent or the most. Man, I think Sports Illustrated people need to have a definition on, on the most influential because this is a joke. This is a joke. I respect Juju Watkins. She's a really good player. But again, if it wasn't for Caitlin, you wouldn't know her name. <clears throat> Next one. Ah, uh, here we go. The cover girl. The cover girl, Angel Reese. Since being drafted, blah 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 blah. She's recently paired up for fitting candy part a fitting candy partnership with Reese's, released a collection of with Reebok, and confirmed she has a signature shoot on the way. Business savvy business opportunities, blah 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 blah. Look, I'm gonna I'll sit here and say that she has, she should be on this list because she has had an impact. She absolutely has. I'm not gonna dismiss her. I'm not gonna do that. But there's no way in the world that you're going to sit here or anyone's going to sit here and tell me she's more influential than Caitlin Clark is to this game. There's there's no way you're going to tell me that she's more influential to the sport. There's no there, you you can't. You want to know why you can't? Because I'm going to tell you why. You see that basketball she has in her hand? They made special basketballs for players. Caitlin Clark's ball sold out in like 15 minutes. You can't buy a Caitlin Clark jersey. In fact, I'm going to do this for shits and giggles right now. You can't buy a Caitlin Clark jersey. It doesn't exist. It's unavailable. It's sold out so damn fast. And they still don't have them. How do I know? I looked it up. I want to see if they're available. Nothing's available. The Caitlin Clark gear is pretty much unavailable. Let's see here. Jerseys. You can buy an Angel Reese jersey right now. You can buy one here for $99.99 on the Chicago Skies website. I mean, you want truth. This is truth. You can buy the jersey on the website. It might be a youth jersey. But there are no youth jerseys available for Caitlin Clark. Um, here we go. NBA store, WNBA store, Angel Reese jersey. Nike, Angel Reese jersey. Fanatics, Angel Reese jersey. Dicks, Angel Reese you can buy them anywhere. You can't buy a, a Caitlin Clark jersey anyway. Not right now. Not as of, as of a week ago. Everything that Caitlin Clark has Caitlin Clark staying on sells out quick. So while I respect her as far as what she's been able to accomplish, she has had some influence. Certainly, the games between uh, the Ace, the the the, the, the Fever and the Sky have been the highest rated games because of that rivalry per se. It really isn't a rivalry, but people want to make it one. How is she the cover? How? 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 Here we go, another one. Come on. Come on, Come on man. Candace Parker. How is Candace Parker one of the 50 most influential people in sports? I don't even think I need to discuss this because this is a joke. This is I'm trying to be not dismissive, but I'm but it's this is insulting. This is absolutely insulting. Let me ask you. You know who wasn't on this list? Sydney McLaughlin Lavroni, the US Olympian, who is absolutely dominating the world. 
setting world records every time she runs. How is Sydney McLaughlin Lebroni not more influential right now than Candace Parker? Than Asia Wilson? This one should make you laugh. Dawn Staley. So Dawn Staley's more influential now, apparently, in sports than Gino Ariema, I guess because she's won a few titles. Who on there next? All right. She's more influential in sports than, I don't know, Eric Spolstra, Steve Kerr, Greg Popovich. And I'm not even a Popovich fan or a Kerr fan, but she's more influential than them. SI really went for the juggler on this one. They really wanted to be all in on women's sports with this thing. All, more all in on the WNBA. Now, I, I say the most comical and laughable one for the last. Well, I got one more after that, but you know what that is. I say the most laughable one for the last, for second to last. No, You look no further than... The ESPN studio team of L. Duncan, Andrea Carter, and Chini Ogumake. They could also add Monica Mc, McDoofus in there and Carolyn Peck and whoever the fuck else you want. Women's basketball shot into the stratosphere in the spring of 2024. Thanks to a groundbreaking March Madness tournament. Let's stop right there. No, it was not thanks to a groundbreaking March Madness tournament. It was thanks to Caitlin Clark. Because if you removed Caitlin Clark from the equation, the numbers would have been the numbers from five years ago. And no one gave a shit. Nobody cared. It was a whirlwind ascent for the sport, and luckily ESPN studio hosts were there to meet the moment while grounding the soaring hype. The group's chemistry jumps off the screen with each member of the triad filling a specific role. Duncan operates as the conductor, seamlessly ushering segments along while Carter provides game analysis, rattling off stats with an almost hypnotic rhythm. Oh, my word. Make me gag some more. Bringing seven seasons of WNBA experience to the desk, Ogumake breaks down X's and O's in a way that only a seasoned hooper can. Duncan Carter and Ogumake present the sport in a stylish, entertaining, and authentic package, helping to enthrall both new and seasoned viewers alike. Sweet baby Jesus, if it wasn't for Caitlin Clark, no one would know who any of these women are. If it wasn't for Caitlin Clark, let me repeat that. If it wasn't for Caitlin Clark, no one would know who any of these women are, especially Carter and Ogumake. L. Duncan's been on TV. Carter and Ogumake were absolutely – Carter didn't have a job with ESPN until two years ago. Who the fuck was Andrea Carter? Ogumake played seven years of WNBA basketball. You know her sister probably a little bit better. And they do happen to have Carolyn Peck on that picture, if you notice, in the far right. Or far left on your screen. My screen is far right. I, you can't. This this is laughable. This studio team is is one of the most the fifty most influential people in, in sports. God. I hope you're laughing with me as I go. I hope you watched twenty four minutes of this video so far because this is such an embarrassment. There are no words, and I presume that you're going to stick around to the end because you want to hear me talk about Caitlin Clark. Because naturally, that's the last person I'm going to be talking about is Caitlin Clark on this one. Because this is a joke. This is such a joke. You can't even, you can't make up a bigger joke than people that were so irrelevant two years ago without, before Caitlin Clark. And they groundbreaking March Madness tournament. It was one player. One player changed the damn tournament. Caitlin Clark. God. Oh. And then finally, the one, the only, Caitlin Clark. I don't have to say anything. We already know. 32 points, 9 assists as a senior. 28 points, 8.5 assists as a junior. 
leads her team to the national championship game twice in a row, beats an undefeated South Carolina in the final four as an 11 and a half point underdog, beats UConn in the final four, beats LSU in the Elite Eight. Yes, they lost to LSU the year before the championship. We know it happened. It is what it is. The talent levels of the teams were not remotely close. Iowa shouldn't have been in either of any either of those final fours. They were there because of one player, one player alone. Caitlin Clark. She carried them. She carried them. The weight of the world on her shoulders. She carried them. They learned how to play with her and learn and accepted their roles, which is the biggest thing in the WNBA. These women can't accept their roles with when playing with a basketball genius like Caitlin Clark. Yeah, basketball genius. Is she is she LeBron Jess genius? LeBron James genius? No. But she's a basketball genius. She sees the game better than anybody in the women's game. And it's not even close. It's not close. I'm gonna read you some stuff. Caitlin Clark, this season, league leader in assists per game, league leader in three pointers made. First in points per game by a rookie. First in field goals made by a rookie. First in assists per game by a rookie. First in steals by a rookie. Third in rebounds by a rookie. First as a guard in rebounds, period. Fourth in blocks by a rookie. First rookie with a triple-double, and she had two of them. And you know what? If she had played yesterday more than 20 minutes, she would have had a third one because she had eight, eight, and five. In 20 minutes of action, <clears throat> she broke the single season assist record. She broke the single game assist record. Most points by a rookie ever. Most assists by a rookie ever. Most three pointers by a rookie ever. Most all star fan votes ever. And oh, don't even get me into the financial changes of everything WNBA related because of Caitlin Clark. Social media, jersey sales, concession stands, hot dogs, beers, social media views. It's one after the other, after the other, after the other. And you want to throw motherfucking Angel Reese on the cover of Sports Illustrated? Sports Illustrated, you should be ashamed of your goddamn selves. And this is the reason we have a problem right now, is you can't even recognize who the fucking best player is. You put Angel Reese the day after she gets injured and she's there for a photo shoot in the outfit she wore in that first game that she didn't play. Man, get the... Sports Illustrated is embarrassing. Absolutely freaking embarrassing. What are your thoughts on this SI list? You can go look at the list. There's a whole bunch of other people on there as well. But there are more WNBA people on there than there are NBA people on there. For real, man. I'm not making this up. I'm not making this shit up. I'm serious. You can't make this crap up. The list. LeBron James. Danny Hurley's a college coach. Anthony Edwards. Why he's so influential, I have no fucking idea. Keens, he's more influential than Shohei Otani and Aaron Judge. Stop. Victor Wembanyama. I mean, oh. Steve Ballmer, Adam Silver, Player Podcast. Uh, whatever. <clears throat> there are more. Uh, there's three times as many WNBA women's basketball person people as there is NBA and college basketball people. <clears throat> Man, forget this shit. I'm on to the next one. Leave a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are on it. I'd love to hear what you got to say about this. And do definitely leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell. Come on now.